today we're going to make a 3D printed alphabet stamp set with a matching case. If you want to print your very own set, the STL and Fusion 360 files are available on my website. You can even modify the Fusion file to change the font or cut out all the letters on a CNC. All right, let's get started. I'm in Fusion 360 and I'm going to start by creating a sketch on the XY plane where I will create some text. Uppercase, A, B, C, D, and then lowercase, special characters. I'll create a new parameter and call it text height. Let's try 0.25 inches. Because these letters will be pretty small, I'm not sure how much detail we'll be able to capture, so I'm leaning towards a relatively simple font. Let's try Bonskrieft semi-bold. I'm gonna create another parameter, call that layer height, change our unit to millimeters, and I'll print with 0.2 millimeter layer height, text thickness, and we'll do a multiplier of layer height, 10 times layer height, which brings us to 0.079 inches. So I'll right click my text, press pull, by text height. So this will happen sometimes. It doesn't always work if you press pull. So instead, I'm going to right click, explode text. Now it's broken that up into a bunch of lines. We can select everything. And unfortunately, we have to go in and deselect all of the little islands and the O's and the B's and the R's and things like that. So a little bit more time, but not the end of the world. Now that we've deselected all of those, we can just right click, extrude, and type in text thickness. Now I'm going to bring all of that into my slicer and basically see if it can be 3D printed. So there are all of our letters. Let's slice. Wow, I don't believe it. First try, and that's just about perfect. We have three perimeters on all of the letters, two perimeters on some of the skinnier stuff. That is fantastic. I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY plane. First thing I'm going to do is project all of these bodies. So now that we have all those lines on this sketch, draw one line along the bottoms of my letters on this top row, another line along the tops. So now we need to draw a box around every letter, and that box needs to encapsulate half of the space between each letter. That will ensure that when we arrange our letters in the rack, they are all spaced correctly. So for the A, find the midpoint, draw a line up, and then create a rectangle from here to here, and that will be the A block. And we'll do the same thing for the B, the C, the D, all the way down the line. So I got all the uppercase letters. The lowercase letters obviously aren't as tall as the uppercase, at least not all of them. But all of these letters will have to fit in the same tray. So the blocks at least have to be the same height. So what we can do is we can draw a line up from here by text height. And that should bring us to the top of the B, D, F, H, etc. So then we can just draw a line across, and that brings us to the top of those letters. Now, of course, we have the tails down here, 0.071. So if we offset this line downwards, we can make these blocks the same height as these ones, and everything will line up. So now we can repeat this box-making process with all of our other letters. All right, it took some time, but I got all of the boxes drawn. I ended up adding a bit of a buffer to the top edge that allowed for some of the taller characters as well. Like, for example, this dollar sign is the only character, well, the dollar sign and the parentheses are the only characters that come up this far. So I added a buffer to the top, and then I added a buffer to the bottom, equal on all of them, to allow for the tails on the P's, the Q's, the G's, and the J's. We also need some space blocks. So to figure that out, I'm going to create some new text. I'll type a few I's with no space, and then I'll add a few more eyes with spaces. Right click, explode text. Now we can check the distance between the eyes without a space, 0.055, and then the distance between the eyes with spaces is 0.15. And the distance between those two is the width of a space, and that comes out to 0.095 inches. And then we can just add that space over here. So this is space width, and then we can draw a rectangle from here to here. We're almost ready to add the blocks onto the letters, but if we do it in this orientation, it won't work. These are stamps, and so they need to be mirrored. So what we can do is we can right click on this sketch, go to redefine sketch plane, and place them onto the top of the letters. Now, instead of extruding them downwards, we can extrude them upwards, and the proper side of the stamp will be facing down. So let's make a new parameter. We'll call this one block thickness. Let's make that an eighth of an inch thick. 
So I can select the profile around the A, right click, extrude, and extrude this by block thickness. And there we go, there is our A block. I'm gonna turn that body off so that when we make the B block, we don't join those two together. Right click, extrude, block thickness. If I had kept the A block on, that would have joined the A block to the B block. All right, so we got all of our letter boxes extruded. I also created some space in between each letter. And because we're gonna be putting these in a rack, we might wanna use multiple of the same letter. So I wanna create some copies. Rather than figuring out the like Scrabble letter distribution, I'm just gonna make copies of all the letters, rectangular pattern. So that's three copies of the uppercase letters. These are all the lowercase letters. We probably don't need quite as many of the special characters, but we will want, I think, a bunch of spaces and periods. That is a lot of stamps. Wow. <laughs> I think these are ready to 3D print. I wonder how long it's gonna take. But before we do that, I'd like to give a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity. From Fusion 360 and 3D printing to video editing, coding, and more, Skillshare has classes that match your goals and interests. I love discovering new skills that unlock new types of projects, and I wanna make more things that involve moving parts. So I decided to take Internal Combustion Engine Basics by Savory 3D. Growing up, I was not the kid who took apart engines and fixed up his car, so I love how this class is really geared towards beginners. In addition to teaching me about engines from the ground up, the engaging 3D animations are giving me so many ideas about how I can integrate mechanical movements into my projects. Join Skillshare today and discover the new skill that will take your creativity to the next level. Explore their extensive collection of online classes risk-free by joining with my link. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare. Now let's get back to designing. All right, everything looks good in my slicer. I'm printing at 100% infill because these are going to be under pressure, so I don't want any risk of them breaking. Even though this is not a lot of filament, it's a relatively long print, clocking in at six hours and 15 minutes, and that's because there are a lot of perimeters in here, and that's what takes time when you are printing. But I'm just thinking, when I actually go to print these and I wanna take them off the bed, where am I gonna put all these letters, especially so they don't all get mixed up? So I do wanna make a case for all of the letters, but I also want that case to hold the rack. So I wanna design that before I design the case. To hold the letters in place, I'm gonna use these 832 machine screws, these guys here. So we need a few dimensions off of those. We need the bolt hole diameter, which will make a little bigger than the bolt itself, so we have a nice slip through joint. 0.175 inches, and then we also want the nut diameter, 0.336 inches. So one decision to make is how long our rack is going to be. I think we might as well max out what I have on these bolts here, 3.25 inches long, 13 letters. I think that's pretty good. You can do a very long name, but you could do some pretty long words. Make a new sketch, and we'll make a rectangle that is block height by rack length. Now we can offset this outwards. We'll extrude this upwards by 0.5. And then to ensure that our letters can slide freely inside of there, I wanna make a clearance parameter, 0.01 inches. And then I'll select all of these faces, press pull by minus clearance. Perfect. I'll create a new sketch on this face. Then we can create a polygon, nut diameter divided by two. We can create a circle in there, that is the bolt hole diameter and then just extrude this out. I'm putting this on the inside because that way as we tighten the bolts in that hole, it will pull the nut further into the hole. If we put the nut on the outside as we tightened it, the nut would get pulled out of the hole. Now I'll create a mid plane and then we can just mirror those extrusions to the other side. There we go. And we want our letters to ride on rails that are an eighth of an inch under the surface. I'll create a construction plane minus block thickness. Now I can see that my bolt is considerably lower than that. So we have a bit of a dilemma here. Ideally, we want this plane at the bottom of the bolt holes. That way the bolts will press on the middle of the letter blocks. So I think the easiest way to do this is to just increase the height of those letter blocks. So we wanna make it 0.183 inches thicker. So it's 1 8 and then we'll just do plus 0 0.183. All right, so it looked like that worked. We have some very hefty blocks now, which is okay. It'll just take a bit longer to print. I'm realizing now that we want the bottom of the letter blocks even lower. 
as is, these are pressing only on like the bottom of the blocks, but if we take it down by 0.05 inches, that will press closer to the middle of the letter blocks. So let's just change this to 0 0.35. Perfect. Now we want to create some rails for the letters to sit on. So I'm going to create a new construction point. I'm going to create a point at edge and plane at the intersection of this plane and this line. And I'll repeat that process on the other three points where this plane intersects those edges. Now we can create a new sketch on this plane. This is the surface on which the letters will slide, project those points, then we can draw lines connecting these points, and these will be our rails for the letters to slide upon. The reason I didn't just create a solid bottom surface is we need space for our nut to slot into there. So if I now extrude these and join it to the bottom, and now you can see we have the perfect amount of space to get our nut into place. So I'm printing the rack out of bronze silk PLA and this stuff looks so cool. I'll have a link for it in the description. Like the letters, I'm printing it at 100% infill because it will be under a decent amount of pressure. You can use the bolt to pull it in place and then screw it all the way in. And as we tighten the head of the screw against the 3D print, it will pull the nut flush. Beautiful. Now we're ready to make our case. We have 26 uppercase letters, 26 lowercase, 10 numbers, I think 14 special characters, and that comes out to 76 compartments. And I also want a compartment for the rack. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY plane, and I'll create a new parameter, compartment width. I'm gonna make this one inch, that will fit three of our largest letters, the W's. I'll create a rectangle here that is our compartment width squared. Actually, no, the compartment width, we want 0 0.9 inches, and our wall thickness is going to be 0 0.1 inch. That makes very easy math. It fits all our letters, and I wanna cut this out of three quarter inch plywood on my Snapmaker CNC, and I think 0.1 inch wall thickness should be strong enough. So I'll create a rectangular pattern, eight in this direction, change the distance to spacing, compartment width plus wall thickness. And then in the other direction, we want 10, again, compartment width plus wall thickness. And then I'll draw a little rectangle, that is wall thickness by wall thickness, same thing over here. And if I draw a rectangle from corner to corner, that completes our shape. So if you remember, I said we needed 76 compartments, eight by 10 grid gives us 80, and it works out perfectly that we need a four inch long compartment for the rack. So if we take out four of those squares to hold the rack, that gives us 76 compartments and one big one for the rack, it's perfect. So I'll just combine four of my compartments and I'll extrude this by half of an inch. Then I'll double check, this should be four inches long, oh no, 3.9. Okay, we might need to take over one more compartment and just combine, I don't know, the spaces and the periods into one. So I'll go back into my sketch, combine those, and just edit my extrusion to include one more compartment. Perfect. And that will also make it so we don't have to screw in the screws all the way to get it in there. It'll be a lot more user-friendly. All right, so we got our tool paths all set up in Fusion. We can see what this will look like if we go to simulate many passes of cutting out all those pockets, as well as the border. Everything looks good. We can send that to the flash drive and head on out to the CNC. So I'm out in the garage where I have the snap maker. I have my half inch plywood stock and I've coated one side in blue painter's tape. And I've laid down a matching layer of painter's tape on the CNC build plate. Now I can put some CA glue on this side, take some activator, spray that on this side, Carefully align my stock in the middle of the plate and press it into place. This will securely hold my workpiece to the bed while allowing me to cut all the way through without using any tabs. So we have a bit of a long cut ahead of us, six hours and 46 minutes, but I think that might still be less time than if we were to 3D print this case.
We got our letters printing and I am definitely keeping the enclosure door closed for this one because we have so many small pieces with a very small contact area. So I would really like to avoid any bed adhesion issues. Because we increased the size of our blocks, our print time did go up by a bit and I raised my layer height to 0.3 millimeters so it prints just a little faster. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice. I was a little worried we might not cut all the way through because I set the depth exactly the same as the thickness, and I, which I think was a bit of a risky move. Like next time I'm definitely gonna set the depth a little more than the material thickness, but check it out. Yes. That is so cool. Oh, CNC's are amazing. I intentionally only did a few passes around the border to save a bit on cutting time, which in hindsight seems a little silly considering this was six and a half hours total to cut. So I probably should have just cut all the way through here, but I'm gonna use this line as a reference to cut all the way through on my table saw. Ah, oh, yes, so happy that worked. I'm kind of liking these thickened edges. So I think instead of cutting along this groove, I'm just gonna trim the edges flush on my table saw. Leaving this a little thicker will also make it easier to find screws for the hinges and the clasp. So the 3D printed rack is exactly half an inch thick, which means that when I put it in its space, it's slightly above the surface. So I need to cut a recess into my lid. I'm gonna do that on the CNC. At this point, I only have two CNC bits, the two that came with the snap maker, and I just crashed the one and a half millimeter end mill into the bed and snapped it in half. So for this cut, I'm gonna use the 3.175 millimeter ball head which unfortunately isn't an end mill, but I set the tool paths close enough that hopefully it will cut relatively cleanly and then we can just clean it up with a little bit of sanding. All right, it's cutting through that pine plywood like butter. Let's try turning up the speed a little bit, maybe up by 10%. Seems to be doing pretty well. Let's go up to 115. I'm pleasantly surprised, even though we used a ball end mill, the bottom of this is really flat. If I zoom in, you can probably just see the ridges, but they're super slight. They'll be really easy to take off with just a quick sanding. And the Delta sander is perfect for getting in those inside corners. Lowercase a, b, c, r, s, t, two, three, periods, exclamation points, and finally, the rack. Three, e, tighten up my screws. Soaking veg tan leather in water turns it into a plastic material and allows it to accept stamps and impressions. So we'll just leave that in the water until the bubbles stop and it will start to feel very moldable. So I'll just lay that on my cutting mat, lay my stamp on top. Now you could hammer this to stamp the leather, but I prefer using clamps. You avoid the risk of double striking, and I find that it gives a cleaner, crisper, more predictable impression. Actually, I'm gonna use my F clamp. I'll just clamp that to the table. 
And because it's such a small contact area, we only need to clamp it for about a minute or so. Remove my clamp. Here we go, moment of truth. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, we look, <laughs> you know, I think we lost the little dot over the eye because it was so small that there really wasn't much holding it on there. You can see it right there, it actually just snapped off. So that is one downside to these 3D printed stamps is little details like that can break loose. I'd love to redo this project with a resin printer because I feel like you would be able to get finer detail and stronger stamps. You probably wouldn't get the same problem with the eye, but that is so cool. I also tried this one. This is now fully dry, and it just goes to show you how much the veg tan leather darkens when it's wet. That's so cool. Oh, I'm so happy with this case. I still need to find a latch for it, and I haven't decided how I want to finish it. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. One of my patrons told me that in traditional typesetting, these are called California job cases. And he knew that because he has access to the patrons exclusive behind the scenes Instagram page. Everyone who supports this channel on Patreon gets access to that Instagram page. And if you want to learn more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash MorleyKurt. And I want to give a special shout out to my top patron, my mom, Kathy Kurt. All of the files are available on my website. I'll have a link in the description for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.